Uh, we, we get all the legends on the hub, man, and this man is no exception. Bo Huff, how you doing, my brother? It's great to meet you. Hey, nice, nice meeting you, finally. Right I've seen what, you around. What do you got going back in uh, Utah? Uh, building custom cars, mostly. A lot of uh, traditional hot rods, but right now it seems like customs are taking over again. A lot of white wall, old school custom cars. The, the, the hobby's kind of coming around back to that, isn't it? It got, it got kind of modern for a little while, and now it's going back to old school. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, that's my style. I really like the old days because that's what turned me on to the whole scene. And, and that's what, when I build a car, I, I think what could have been done back then if you'd have thought of it. So that's what God gave me a mind so I can think, uh, think that way. And, and that's what I've been doing. I brought three cars down here to this show, and uh, they seem to be, people like them. Tell know? us about those. What kind of cars did you bring to the show this year? But I bought, I brought uh, a four-door, yeah, four doors, a chop Merc that I did for Gino from Old School Rods Car Culture Magazine. That's in building five. And then I bought, brought a uh, 49 Ford that I chopped really hard. It's a, a convertible that I'm really proud of. It's in building three. They opened a special building. It's right there by Chip Foose's car. And it's, that one I really like. And then out, outside, uh, CP from the Dead Sleds, he bought this uh, that I chopped a little little Chevy truck, and he's got flames all over it. Pretty nice. <laughs> I'm down. I'm sensing a theme here. You like to chop them down? Uh, yeah, but you know, there's some cars don't need to be chopped. Uh, some cars don't need to be flamed. Everything's different. It just depends on what it tells you to do. There's a 56 Buick parked over there by me that's just lowered and mildly customized that he captured you know you can you can either cut them up into a whole bunch of pieces and put them back together and they look good on, on that particular case sanitary looks really good you know yeah in some cases the manufacturer got it right oh yeah yeah and uh, you can improve on right uh, but I, I personally don't improve on right by making trying to make changes that don't need to be there uh, and I it's really important to me the tires and the wheels, and I, I stay old school. I'm I'm not into to the fancy wheels. I'm into the hubcaps and uh, white wall tires. That's everybody has. That's why there's menus. Everybody likes different things. Well, that's what's also great about the car world is that you know you can be into whatever type of car, but what unites us all is the love of the automobile. Well, I'd shake your hand on that one. Right on. There you go. Now let me ask you uh, in particular. I know that the 50 and 51 Mercs have been really popular to do chop projects on, is it harder and harder to come by those cars these days? Oh boy. Yeah, I think that's why a lot of guys are going to four doors. At one time, four doors was kind of a cutload uh, to customize, but you know what these days? Besides that, you get two extra doors, you know? <laughs> Fit more people in the car, and it's a lot more unique. Uh, I don't mind. Some guys are still trying to stay with that other, other thing. If you go buy a field car Mercury these days, it's like really, really, really expensive. Uh, I'm, I'm talking, then you got to build the whole thing. That's just for a rusted out roller. If you can find it. You know, the boys have already pretty much grabbed a lot of them up. Well, fortunately, where you live uh, in Utah, it's pretty dry out there, so not quite so many rust issues as maybe those guys on the East Coast. Uh, my dad. I used to drag cars in and he'd say, have you had your tetanus shot? There's still <laughs> rust out there, but not as bad as like the East Coast, no. We're more like California cars. Bo, tell us about the projects that you have going in your shop right now. And I got a Ranchero that we're doing that is pretty radical, 57 Ranchero. I've got a 51 Mercury that, in my opinion, is the most beautiful Mercury ever. That it, and I can't really say that in my of that type of car, the way I did it. Because man, there's been some beautiful Mercury's and I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to take nothing away, I'm just trying to add to it. Uh, I've got around 17, 18 projects that, that are being built right now. And if people want to check it out online, is there a website or something they can go to? I got a Bohuff MySpace and uh, I got a website, Bohuff Custom uh, Store, I think, yes, or shop, I don't know. How about just Google Bohuff? You can, oh, if you Google Bohuff, you can get me, I, I'm sure. AG talking about the shows coming up. Tell us about those. Well, one of them, uh, the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd of March is the 
three days, trace days in Phoenix that uh, we got Dick Dale, you got the Blasters, you got Big Sandy, uh, Mad Max and the Wild Ones. You know, you know, Bill Bateman's a good buddy of mine. Uh, Bill Bateman plays good music. He sure does. Uh, you, we probably got some mutual friends then. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, you ever heard of the King King? No. It's a club in Hollywood where the, where the Blasters used to play and uh, Bill Bateman and his... Uh, his the Blue Shadows. Been... Well, the Blue Shadows was the house band at the King King for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah very cool. Yeah. Jake on guitar and Bill on drums. Yeah. That was a, that was a real good outfit. Well, uh, that, that show's coming up soon. My show's the second weekend of July in East Carbon, Utah, which, uh, believe me, until you experience that, it's a real, it's biggest rockabilly thing in the state of Utah. And then we have a Route 66 show in, uh, towards uh, October or something like that. I don't even remember the date, but it's uh, the, the Bohuff third annual Route, Route 66 show that, at Ninja's Park that rocks. And we have some of the coolest bands at that. We have some real good rockabilly bands. Uh, old that, that, music, that music goes right with the lifestyle also. That, that rockabilly goes right with the lifestyle you guys are... Uh, that way, I got to ask you a little bit about the Dead Sleds too and your relation with the Crown Deluxe sunglasses. Well, I, I bumped into the Dead Sleds a few years back at Viva Las Vegas, which uh, we're in the Suede Palace right now here at the Grand National Roadster Show. And Axel from the Shifters also puts that, that show on and does a very good job in Vegas, at uh, Viva Las Vegas. And I bumped into these guys and we laughed and who didn't carry it on. And, and then after a while I ended up joining the club and I swore years ago I would never join a, a club. But this is a family ordinance. They might look tough but they're actually family people. And they got a lot of good custom cars. So I've been, I've been with them since Ink and Iron. And, uh, that was, that's a show here in, in Long Beach. I'm sure you know about it. So, uh, well, it seems like you guys. I mean, they introduce you to the leader of, uh, or I don't know if you call him the leader, but it seemed like everybody looks up to CP. Yeah. If uh, CP, sure. You get CP over here. How you doing, CP? Chris, man, with the hub. And I know that uh, CP was just telling me that uh, they're going to be up on the hub, and you know, you guys are just the kind of people we want there because, like I was telling Bo, man, it's all about the love of the car. Yeah, you know, yeah, man. It's about. Driving them low, fat white walls, and having some cool glasses to go along with your car. You know what I mean? Yep. yep. I mean, basically, Bo's been doing it for years, and we're just kind of getting the torch and moving forward with it. You know what I mean? Trying to look cool, 50 style, and that's all we could do. Right? Well, and that's why, you know, the Crown Deluxe sunglasses just fits the image of your club so well and the lifestyle. How did you get hooked up with Eddie G and Crown Deluxe? Oh, man, he's just, he's always at the he's shows. A, he's a big part of the scene. Yeah. He's always at the shows, representing. You know, selling his glasses, and you know, he makes a lot of cats look cool. And you know, why not be cool with some crown glasses? You know what I mean? He's not, he's not faking the funk. He's really part of the scene. Yep. Exactly. Just what Eddie G was saying before, man. He's part of the lifestyle. He lives it. And I'm glad to finally be cool enough to be wearing some crown deluxes as well. Oh. Hey, you've been <laughs> overhauled. <laughs> <laughs> right, man. Hey, CP. Great to meet you, Bo. Thank you so much for uh, talking to us. Got to get both you guys up on the hub. These are, hey, these are the dead sleds. Hey, let's hear it for the dead sleds, man. Let's get some props to the dead sleds right there. Welcome to the hub, you guys. Hell yeah. Right on. Way cool. Well, that's that from the dead sleds and the Crown Deluxe Sunglasses booth here at the Grand National Roadster Show. I'm Chris for the hub, coolest car community on the net. This is Bo Huff with the Dead Sleds Car Club. You're watching the hub. <laughs>